So we're going to enter to section number one from this black chemical engineering, reactor engineering number two, which is what's conversion and let's apply those conversion terms to molar balances. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is uh, what's conversion or why do we need conversion? Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is we choose the limiting reactant, this guy here, as a basis of calculation, that means that we search in a reaction, let's say A plus B and C, you know this is the limiting reactant, then you're going to base it on these species. Now, once you identify the limiting reactant, you got to relate these to all other species. So let's take out this and let's pass that dividing. You got B divided by A, C divided by A, D divided by A. Those are the coefficients and we have one as a coefficient of our limiting reactant. So that's the first thing. Then the other thing we need to do is now quantify how far or how long is taking the reaction. How much of A is reacting to give products. And that's where we get the definition of conversion. Conversion mathematically is essentially conversion of species A equals moles of A that already reacted divided by the moles of A that were fed in the reactor. So as you can see, it's essentially a fraction. You will always see that the moles of A reacted will never be higher than the moles of A being fed. So essentially, you cannot react what you haven't fed. So this is the, uh, the correlation we're using. Now, of course, you can start from zero if you didn't react, uh, if you did not react something, you start with zero. So that's those are your limits, zero and one inclusive, so it's a fraction. Now, as X increases, maybe you don't uh, visualize it right now, but as X increases, the reaction converts more reactant of A to a given product. So you have a conversion of 10% and I have a conversion of 90%. If I ask you at the end, which one give, gave me more product? Let's see, B. I will choose 90, the one 90%, because 90% of A converted to B and only 10% of A here converted to B. So that's one thing. Keep in mind that the higher the conversion, the higher the products. Now, one little example in conversion. We have this amount of A, of 284.4 grams of A being fed to the reactor. Now, after four hours, this time is tricky. You don't need to have it. Uh, if you are using a CSTR or a batch reactor, you don't actually care because this has no time uh, restrictions. So they tell you that the outlet stream has 20.3 gram, uh, gram moles of A. They kindly ask you to get the conversion. So the first thing we need to do, according to this equation, is the moles of A being reacted and the moles of A being fed. Moles of A being reacted are essentially the difference. So if you got this at the beginning and you having this at the end, the difference will tell you how much of uh, the moles of A are turning into B, which in this case is 264.4. Now, don't use this number here, 20.3. Those are the moles of A that did not react, and we don't want that. We want exactly the opposite, the ones that actually reacted. So just keep that in mind and continue with here. Moles being fed is given in the data. So literally, you got this here. 284.4 grams of A are being fed to the reactor. Okay, and yeah, just use the formula, which is X of A, or conversion of A is moles being reacted, which is 264.4, divided by this 284.4, and you get 0.92 as a fraction, or you can report this data as a uh, percent, which 92% is okay, it's relatively high, you are converting almost everything. Now, 
why are we using this? Why are we using conversion? Why do we make this introduction? It's essentially to help us establish a relative or a kind of a standard. So we are not going to be speaking about flows because you can use many flows if you're using a scale reactor, a huge reactor, a chemical plant or a scale lab. The conversion they tell you is 90% and the conversion they tell you is 90% and the conversion is 20%. Well, you can co uh, you can identify which of these are better processes. For example, you get better co uh, conversion here rather than in a huge factory. Even though the flows are higher here, probably you are producing more of B, which is your product. You're producing way more, but you are not reacting A, so you still have this. And in this process, maybe you are not producing that much of B, but it's more efficient. Uh, once again, the conversion may only lie between these two limits. And it's easier to get a 100% of reaction progress. So uh, I think everyone is familiar with the 100% scale. So if I tell you it's 100%, you know it's full or complete. And if I tell you it's 50% full, you know it's half full or half the process now 0% means you have done nothing so you get the idea and in chemical engineering is the same you got a better uh, how to say to you get a better idea of what the process is happening when you use the percent so I use this example here let's apply it 100 grams of A are fed and 70 grams of A are transformed to products so by definition it's x of a, it's how many moles reacted, 70, how, moles, how many moles I fed is 100, I got 70% in the conversion. Now I got this exercise, 35.4 gram moles of a are fed and 12.4 gram moles are transformed. So by definition also, you just need to do this. As you can see, it's very hard to know how much percent is going to be reacting. Maybe the other one was easy because it was on a base of 100. But if you use, I don't know, 10,000 and 7,000, well, it's going to be kind of tricky. So that's why we use percent. So 70% is uh, more like easy to get and 35% it's easier to get rather than saying 12.4 grammoles of A per each 35.4 grammoles of A being fed. So now hopefully you're getting the idea of why we're using conversion. And uh, yeah, essentially you can also say that the first uh, conversion is two times as efficient as the second one because you have 70% here and you got 35%. So essentially, even though uh, there are different flows, the conversions or the better, uh, the most efficient one is going to be this one here. And yes, this is what we're going to use, why are we going to see conversion? Because we are going to apply it on the molar balances of the reactors. So previously we've seen that we could change from flows, which is F of A or grammoles of A per unit time, let's say second, to concentration, which was grammoles of A per unit volume, let's say liters. But this time we're going to change that definition to conversion. So it's kind of tricky, but it's easy. And actually it's way easier to imagine how the reactants are uh, turning into products and to graph and to understand what's happening. And we're going to transform all the design equations. So these equations here, we're going to change them in terms of conversion. And one thing I really want you to note is this is useful only for one reaction uh, processes. So you uh, have multiple reactions. I think using flows will be a better idea. But right now it's very good to let you know like the theoretical parts on a reactor or chemical reactions. And if you're using only one reaction, which is the case in many industries, it works a lot. So let me show you this in another video.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.